Okay, <laughs> good afternoon, Bon pomeriggio again, everybody. Welcome back to the second part of what we're going to try to videotape on this 42nd day of um, our family channel, Back to Sicily. So um, earlier I spoke about budget and for the second session, I wanna to talk to you about and show you what I brought. So without further delay, let me walk you right to uh, the bedroom and um, I'm going to show you how I laid out everything. And I came in, um, uh, there's some still pictures. I used two of these um, uh, Navy duffel bags. Let me close, let me see, see what everybody is doing out here. You can see everybody, a couple of people walking by. Let me show you the nice dusk coming down to, um, to our neighborhood. It's not as loud as I, I thought it would be. So that's the, uh, oops, that's the, what it looks like on the other side. And, uh, oh, it's kind of a nice, nice look. Okay, so air conditioning unit. Uh, that's the living room veranda over there. So let me just come into our section here. This is the bedroom. Let me close the windows so we don't get too much noise. So that's the first um, duffel bag. I, I brought two of those, my hand carry and, um, and my uh, backpack. So the first thing I'm gonna show you are um, the Imelda Marcos collection of shoes. So I brought um, a black uh, um, Converse sneakers. And this is my most important uh, shoe. So if I had to only bring um, three pairs, I would bring this one, which I used to walk all over the place. I would bring my um, everyday chinelas slippers, and I would bring uh, the flip-flops for what I use uh, in the shower to avoid any kind of uh, feet problem. But as you can see, I brought um, these, one, two, three. These boots, I haven't even worn them yet. I thought it was kind of a, a possible fashionista millennials look. My loafers, which would be good for some formal occasion if, if any ever arises. And uh, I've actually worn it a couple of times out in town. And this is a, a beach shoe, which uh, I thought I would use yesterday or the day before when I went out to Mondello Beach. But because some, some beach areas here in, in uh, Sicily are very rocky. Uh, so let me start in the closet here. So I brought um, three long sleeves, which I probably will not really wear. Well, this one is the one I, I made a videotape where I had the lady shorten the sleeves. This one, well, I've worn this several times too, but I think this is out of fashion, plaid shirts in, in Palermo. And this is just in case I have to wear neck and tie. I did bring a, uh, a blazer. I don't know how useful that will be. I haven't worn it yet. And this one is a super duper um, all wool, um, L.L. Bean uh, jacket uh, winter coat that I brought mainly to use as a blanket on the airplane and um, I probably will leave that here. This is my everyday uh, Patagonia winter coat. I have a pair of jean jacket here and then a jean uh, shirt and then my Filipino barong in case of some Filipino. Although I actually wore that twice also now for some occasions around here and uh, okay that's all I have in here this is the shower of course so here you'll see I have all our um, back to oops why is this thing going crazy I have here all the flags for um, our three-way dialogue um, Puerto Rican flag I mean a uh, Cuban flag Puerto, uh, Filipino flag Puerto Rican flag and the US flag uh, there you see uh, here's some crazy stuff. I initially thought when I first arrived, uh, or before I left rather, that I would stay in Palermo the first week or two and then try to go camping somewhere near the Navy base over on the other side of the island near Catania. So I brought a tent and I brought um, an air mattress and I brought a sleeping bag. So actually the sleeping bag has come in handy, but uh, we'll see what happens to the tent and the uh, the air mattress. So I have uh, pajamas there. I I just threw that in at the last minute, uh, which actually has come in handy now that it's beginning to get a little colder. So I only have my jeans. 
uh, two pairs of chinos, the regular uh, beige ones, khaki ones, and this bright red one. This is a swimsuit and my swimming shirt. Uh, my one pair of warm socks for the airplane. And then I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine, ten. There are two hanging out in the laundry. These are those half C's. I don't really like them. They just, I just don't feel like I'm wearing socks. So t-shirt wise, I have one, two, three. This is a t-shirt. Four. And I think I'm wearing five. There are two out hanging outside, six, seven. And then two polo shirts and two regular round neck t-shirts. And I have that bandana, which uh, Timmy, my wife's making fun of me because I was using that before as sort of my my mock-up um, face mask uh, using a couple of rubber bands. I have a pair of gloves, my scarf and beret for when I go home, when it's freezing cold out in the JFK airport while waiting for my ride. I brought two, two sweaters and uh, a raincoat, a box of masks, spare glasses, spare sunglasses. Um, again, you know, just some emergency medicines, floss, uh, tape is always good. And so here you got one, two, three, four, five, six underwear, two hanging out on the veranda, one I'm wearing, so that's seven. And I think there's one more hiding somewhere. Uh, so that's it in terms of clothes and shoes that I brought. Uh, I did bring a very useful item, which is this, this, um, this cart, it really saved my life in terms of carrying the two duffel bags and my entire load, uh, which probably is about 100 pounds. Here's some more extra uh, toothbrush, uh, nail files, uh, razors, deodorant. Uh, oh, these are very handy. I use these. These are some, um, some uh, plastic ties that I use. These small ones I use to put in between uh, zippers for my uh, the, both the duffel bag as well as uh, my hand carry just for security. Now here's a nice item. We're not being paid by REI, but this is a very handy in invention. It's a full, it's a full cooler to keep things cold, which I thought I would need for uh, trips earlier in the uh, late summer. But it's actually become handy to to go grocery shopping. I can put it by the cart, bring heavy, uh, uh, like six bottles of water. And then of course it folds flat for when you wanna pack it away. And uh, I usually put it in the bottom of the uh, duffel bag. But I normally put it over here, and this guy, when I go shopping for the big, um, big liter bottles of, um, of water. Uh, here just again, uh, Toilet items, normal stuff, nothing really big. And so then I'll go out here. So this is my my hand carry. But the inventive thing I did here is I bought and brought one of these um, sort of inexpensive um, blankets that I bring with me as a hand carry because when you're stuck in the airport, and I know it's, it's, it's really come in handy. It's a small package, but it, it fluffs up. And I remembered when, when we had missed our flight in Miami on the way to Ecuador, this came in very handy for the kids to just lie down on the floor or you know uh, try to keep themselves warm when the air conditioning is just too, too strong inside an airport. So again, here's my everyday backpack. Has everything. Here's my handy dandy um, Trader Joe's for uh, when you go grocery shopping. This is my second um, second uh, duffel bag and I did bring this tarp because I thought that would be useful for the bottom of my tent. But now it turns out that will be handy when now that it's cooler and I notice everybody when they dry their their, um, their laundry and it's raining, they just leave the laundry out there to dry, but they cover it with, with a big plastic sheet or a tarp that looks like that. Uh, some extra things I brought. Uh, you'll see most Airbnbs, they advertise that they don't have carbon monoxide or a, um, 
uh, uh, what do you call it, um, a uh, smoke alarm. So I brought one of each. They were, I don't know, on sale for like $15 or $20. So there's the uh, uh, smoke alarm there. Uh, the carbon monoxide, I, I actually, here, I'll show you. I put it in the bedroom because I figured that's where I am eight hours a day, right there, just right underneath the air conditioning unit. So again, you see the, the windows, and let me go out and finish this up. So other things I brought, I brought two umbrellas, one sizable one and one very small portable one. I did get this temperature thingy thing. I haven't really used it. Maybe just give it away as a present. Uh, here's the um, hydro flask, which is very handy earlier when I needed to uh, carry ice. And this guy, I kind of didn't really need it, but it was useful when you go into the airport and you collect some water at the uh, water fountain instead of spending $6 for uh, four ounces of water. These are for the Filipinos. They know what that is. Um, these I just threw in my bag at the last minute. They're, you know, sort of half used uh, foil, which has come in handy. Uh, of course, a, a multi-purpose tool. This one, I bought in Ecuador, which is handy because it has inches as well as centimeters, which is uh, very useful when you're trying to measure something. This one is a food. I brought this mainly to weigh things, make sure I wasn't overweight, but it's also coming handy to just measure some food items. Now, here's something that is... Uh, well loved in Italy, Ziploc bags. So I, I use it both for food as well as for packing. Uh, these are more my um, videotaping stuff. I was gonna get uh, dual microphones, but uh, the second one, uh, Amazon didn't get it to me on time, so I only have one. So therefore the splitter thing, I don't really need. This one obviously I need for using in my tripod, which I probably will not bring home and just uh, give to uh, some newfound friend here who does video work. Now this one I brought because um, I'm trying to think I, where I went where there were, they didn't have a clothesline. So this is a 50 foot length of um, of, um, of cordage, which usually is, uh, you, well, it's a laundry line. And then um, a pair of gloves. And uh, for the preppers out there, they know what this is. This is the uh, paracord. Actually, this is actually a, an ersatz um, off-brand. Uh, but anyway, so th this will actually come in handy. I was, I was trying to figure out in case of a fire that even though I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four of these huge uh, verandas where you can jump out because there's only one door which is the main door here. And if you can imagine that it was ever, you know, there's a fire or um, this, this exit was somehow blocked. The only way you can get out, and I'm on the, uh, even though Europeans consider it third floor, I'm actually on the fourth floor. So I'm about 35 to 40 feet up from the ground. Uh, oh, here, a couple more things I wanna show. Oh, these I need badly because somehow I've gotten like two mosquito bites a night here. Um, they don't have screens. Here's a handy flashlight when I just walk around town. WD-40. I know it's silly to have it, but it's coming handy for squeaky hinges and supposedly there's like 101 uses for it. Again, something small I can just leave for someone. Here's a string of lights that I was going to use for camping. And oh, these are my uh, three-way dialogue books. So uh, book. Christina Garcia is of course Cuban-American and my favorite here Esmeralda Santiago when I was Puerto Rican and then another favorite this is for the Filipinos Evelina Galang um, her wild American self. Oh of course uh, the motivation for this trip uh, Trini Alfred Zappala the reverse immigrant and one of the books I uh, last one say I got off of a um, bookstore here, Sicily 1943. Um, I thought I would, I would do some trips around Italy following a little bit of the route about that, um, especially going to the town of uh, Licata, which is um, from my favorite 
book when I was in high school, teenager, A Bell for a Dawn by John Hersey. So uh, these books I probably will not bring home because of their weight. And actually I was gifted um, by my new friend here, Ugo uh, Migliori, this wonderful book on, it, it's really um, a lot of history. It's, it's a lot of iconic, you know, historical shots of, of Sicily that shows you how, how unchanged Sicily has been. And here's one, second one he gave me about um, um, the, the Norman architecture of Palermo. Again, another beautiful book and uh, history. So uh, my Italian phrase book, which I really haven't used or carried around because I just basically imitate everyone. Uh, oh, here, I get uh, here. Um, oh, so you have your three-way dialogue flags here and uh, Puerto Rico, Philippines, Cuba. Um, th th these are the magazines that I bought here. This one, I think this is the September one. It has uh, Connie Costa from California. So she was featured, beautiful shot of her looking from above um, Piazza Pretoria, which is the Piazza of Shame. Some beautiful shots they took of her. Looks like one of the markets. I don't know if it's Balaro or which, uh, doesn't look like Bucheria, maybe. Maybe uh, Mercato del Capo. The second one here has another new friend. This is with Lydia uh, Shembri and e la bellezza delle donne so beautiful article about her art work and let me see so oh here's obviously my uh, laptop my tripod again another thing i almost broke because of the way i packed it but i think that's about it oh again finally of course i'm glad i i, I laminated this because this has been a godsend. It's very handy and trying to explain to to everybody from professors and um, and bus drivers and anybody else in between, uh, the, especially the ladies at the stores. They they love hearing about that the history and you can just see it in one in one um, one illustration. Here's some food that keeps us alive. Um, here I made some um, some lumpia. Here I just bought from the uh, Chinese grocery. 50 pieces of uh, lumpia wrappers. Uh, these are my emergency um, um, uh, granola bars that I haven't even eaten yet because I really have no emergencies. We have our emergency tank from Ecuador, Maracuya. We have some from the Philippines with calamansi. Oh, of course my spam is still alive. I thought with the, with the, with the Mediterranean hurricane, I might have to resort to it and keep myself alive for 16 meals out of that. And of course I have my, my uh, uh, jasmine rice. We have some sutanghon. Uh, we have some pancit over here, my favorite uh, Italian snack. And of course, uh, luci, Santa Lucia. Have some, uh, I'm gonna make this tonight, a little uh, caprese with mozzarella cheese. And we still have some pancit mix. I have one more um, soup to make. Oh, and Cebu mangoes, of course. Another emergency pack. And um, just some normal ragu a la bolognese for just throwing some spaghetti, quick spaghetti. I mean, nothing to it at all. Uh, so yeah, and, and of course you, you can, you know, these are normally about four euros a bag, but it was on sale for, for half price uh, last Friday. So I bought a couple more. And uh, with that, I think uh, we will close in terms of um, stuff I brought. Oh, um, I brought these also because you never know that Airbnbs are supposed to supply things, but usually when you get their knives have been so well worn by other, other renters before you. So here you can see you can grilling there. And even here, you see the frying pans after a while, uh, it gets kind of worn. So actually I bought this one myself just uh, last week for, it was, again, there's a lot of half sales here in, um, in Palermo. I figure just, it's healthier to have, um, to have the, the tough lawn finish, not all scratched up and you're eating half of it. So, all right, uh, let me close out for tonight. Maybe a final look outside as the sun goes down. Oh, oh, here, I put my thermometer out here and let's see what it reads.